Some people believe that rich countries are rich because their people are smart and hardworking, while poor countries stay poor because their people are uneducated and lazy. This is how people from rich countries usually perceive it. But it's not the case. On the other hand, many people from poor countries say that their country is poor because it is being exploited by rich countries. But that doesn't seem to be true either. The question is, where do things really stand? In this episode, we will answer a fundamental question that is of great concern for many people on this planet. Mainly, why are Western countries rich, while the rest of the countries, with few exceptions, are poor? We've designed this channel to regularly publish videos about the most important questions for humanity. So subscribe to our channel, and if you do not want to miss any important videos, click the bell button. Let's start. Climate Few people know that people from colder countries or regions with a temperate climate can work more hours a day and have a higher productivity than people from warmer countries. Studies show that the optimal working temperature is 21 degrees Celsius, and with each degree added, productivity decreases by 3%. This favors people from Western countries, who naturally live in Northern regions, because in colder conditions, people can be active for more hours a day, while in warmer climates, our body overheats and requires a pause to cool down. And what is more important is that it is much easier to warm up than to cool down. You can warm yourself up by simply putting on more clothes, while if it is hot, you need a slave with a fan or air conditioning. At noon, when temperatures reach their highest values, people from warm regions cannot be active. As a result, siesta was introduced in our culture, meaning the tradition of having a nap in the early afternoon, which is present in the Mediterranean region, Philippine Islands, and Latin America. On the contrary, in cold countries at noon, temperatures are favorable for work and other activities. So when the British arrived in India, they kept the habit of being active at noon, a situation which left the Indian people, who were doing nothing at midday because of the heat, somewhat confused. That is exactly where the famous proverb saying that only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun came from. So Europe, with its favorable climate, has benefited people to work more hours a day and be more productive making them, in the long run, richer. Agriculture In many parts of the globe, rain is either totally absent, as in the case of the Sahara Deserts and the Arabian Peninsula, or it is not regular, as in the case of the African savanna, which makes it completely impossible to practice agriculture. In the tropical areas of South America and South Asia, on the contrary, it rains abundantly. But that is exactly the problem, because there is too much rain. It erodes the soil very quickly, which does not allow for the development of efficient agriculture. In Europe, however, rainfall comes regularly and in optimal quantity for good farming. Rain, together with climate, is not Europe's merit, but pure luck. In some areas, the rest of the continents also have places suitable for agriculture, but Europe in its entirety is the most perfect place for agriculture. But why is agriculture so important for the wealth of a country? The contribution of a strong agriculture to the wealth of a country lies in the fact that it allows people to make food reserves, which leaves them more time for doing other important activities, such as education, trade, science, art, or nothing at all. Also, food supplies allow for the existence of cities which import food from villages. It is namely in cities that trade, arts, science, and education are concentrated. Personal Freedom The Hen with the Golden Eggs of the Development in the Middle Ages, many European cities had a privileged status, such as the French, British, and Italian communes, or the German Free Imperial Cities. People were fleeing poverty and oppression from their lords to live in cities, because cities were oases of personal freedom in a world of serfdom, a form of half-slavery. Cities offered refuge for fugitives and the freedom to do almost anything. This is where the proverb saying, city air makes you free, came from. In those times, this was not a metaphor, but reality. In Europe as a whole, ordinary people enjoyed more freedom than in Asia, and private property was much more respected. This led to people having the right of their own initiative, the right to do something on their own behalf without being punished, such as trade or production. In China, the state was holding the monopoly over initiative. It was the state which decided if there was to be trade or not, if something was produced or not. At the same time, the state did not allow and even punished personal initiatives. In order to show that monopolizing personal initiative by the state leads to poverty, we have the more recent example of the USSR. In the USSR, the state at the central level decided what had to be produced in the country, while personal commercial initiative was severely punished. 
This led to the degradation of economy and goods produced, and the USSR could not be competitive on the global market. The result was the collapse of the Union in 1991, and a development delay of several decades in the 15 republics that were part of it. Personal freedom has another important consequence. A person who has the right of initiative will seek to invest more time and effort in their education because they know that the more knowledge they have, the more wealth they will be able to earn. Education More education means more money. By the end of the first millennium, however strange that may sound for some people, it was not Christian Europe, but the Muslim world which held the leadership in education. Thus, the most enlightened city in the world was not Rome, London, or Paris, but rather the city of Cordoba from Spain, which belonged to the Al-Andalus Caliphate. In Cordoba, there were at the time more than 80 libraries and schools specialized in medicine, mathematics, astronomy, and even botanical education, which was by far surpassing education centers in the rest of Europe. It was precisely the Muslim world which laid the foundations of modern mathematics and introduced the decimal system. It was also Muslim scholars who laid the foundations of chemistry and optics in physics, discovered anesthesia, and opened the first hospitals in the world. But education in the Muslim world did not bear fruit because Muslim leaders saw education as a potential danger to the monopoly held by Islam in terms of thinking. So that, in a short time, the Muslim world turned its back to education and science. Education was only for the ruling class and for the chosen ones. In Europe, the Catholic Church and the Inquisition had tried to persecute research and science as well, but they had managed to do so only for a short period of time, and only in Portugal, Spain, and Italy. Instead, England, the Netherlands, the north of Germany, as well as Sweden and Norway, which separated themselves earlier from the Catholic Church, enjoyed much more freedom and scientific stimulation. Europe, unlike Asia, saw the colossal potential of education and science for the prosperity of the nations and their wealth. Europe was the first one to realize that education can be monetized and strongly supported the generalization of education for all. Because states and companies knew that an educated citizen and employee brings more wealth to the state and to the company compared to an uneducated one. It was mainly due to education and the cultivation of science and technology that Europe was the one that produced, in the modern era, the Industrial Revolution. Capitalist Ethics Climate, agriculture, freedom of initiative, and generalization of education for all could not have made Western countries so wealthy if the West had not voluntarily renounced the luxury meaning pleasures and useless things, for which money is spent. West Europeans were the first ones to renounce extravagant palaces in favor of sober workrooms and aristocratic clothes in favor of modest outfits. This changed the perspective on matters of luxury in modern European societies and was based on the new Protestant business ethics, which was born during the Reformation initiated by Martin Luther in 1517. The new ethics stimulated education and honest work and rejected luxury and aristocratic sluggishness. If you want to find out more about this ethics and how it transformed Europe, you can check Max Weber's book, The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, in the link in the description. Certainly, some European states became rich not due to work and ethics, but rather on the contrary, as a consequence of robbery, such as the case of Spain, which plundered the whole continent of America of its wealth after discovering it with the help of Christopher Columbus in 1492. However, very soon Spain itself was to lose its wealth. After losing two wars, the Anglo-Spanish in 1585 to 1604, and the War of Spanish Secession in 1701 to 1714, gold and silver became scarce in the Spanish treasury. The result was that Spain definitively turned from a superpower to a secondary state. And it was not as much because of the wars lost, as because of the lack of business spirit and ethics. The Spanish bathed in luxury and produced almost nothing since most of their products were imported. Some people rightly wonder, how and where did the Spanish riches disappear? The answer is the following. The Spanish gold reached England, France, the Netherlands, and Germany through trade. The Spanish were buying products from these countries until they no longer had any money. These states, unlike Spain, understood that excessive opulence and luxury can only lead to poverty. More than that, if money destined to luxury were invested in businesses, these would bring even more money. In this way, instead of wasting money, England, France, the Netherlands, and Germany were looking to invest, and instead of buying, they preferred doing trade. Western countries created trade networks in order to trade with each continent, in particular with Asia. 
the British created East India Company in 1600, the Dutch West India Company in 1602, Denmark created its own company in 1616, France in 1664, and Sweden in 1713. And after the Industrial Revolution, which began in 1760, Europe started to have even more goods to trade. European goods were exported everywhere. The world had never seen such a vast production and trade before, and in Europe, money began to flow abundantly. At the same time, the United States, which before gaining independence in 1776 was a British colony, got massively rich. So let us summarize. Why are Western countries richer than the rest of the world? This is due both to the luck of having a favorable climate for efficient agriculture, which allow to make food reserves, as well as the merit of respecting freedom and personal initiative, stimulating education of masses and science, supporting capitalist ethics, which discourages luxury and doing business at a global scale. In order to produce this video, we have used the best book which explains the wealth of the West, that of Harvard professor of economics, David Landis, The Wealth and Poverty of Nations. If you want to learn more in depth about this issue, find this fundamental book by clicking the link in the description. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Subscribe to our channel for more great content and do not hesitate to like this video and to share your opinion in the comment section. See you soon with the best videos.